Do you remember those bench seats in old cars that made long drives feel like a cozy lounge experience? From wind-up windows to built-in ashtrays, these old car features show how much car design has evolved. Today's video is a throwback to the quirky and unique parts of old cars we used to love. Tail fins. Tail fins and record players in cars. A nostalgic nod to an era when cars were symbols of dreams and extravagance. Not just practical transportation, American cars boasted tail fins that soared skyward. The trend originated with the 1937 Cadillac Fleetwood, but it was the 1948 Cadillac that truly transformed tail fins into a defining feature of automotive design. These fins, crafted by visionaries like Harley Earl at General Motors and Virgil Exner at Chrysler, were less about function and more about flamboyance. By the late 1950s, cars like the 1959 Cadillac Eldorado sported fins so grandiose they seemed ready to lift off. They symbolized a relentless pursuit of modernity, often at the cost of practicality and safety, as evidenced in cases like Kane versus Chrysler. Eventually, the trend dwindled, giving way to more subdued designs. Yet, the influence of tail fiends lingered, marking a distinct chapter in automotive history where design and cultural symbolism intertwined. Record players, then there's the story of the 1956 Highway Hi-Fi, Chrysler's in-car record player, pioneered by LP record inventor Peter Goldmark and embraced by Chrysler. These players were an ambitious fusion of technology and style. Designed to withstand the rigors of driving, they played special 7-inch records at 16 to 3 RPM. However, these record players were a fleeting phenomenon, hindered by reliability issues and a limited music selection. Soon, overtaken by more practical technologies like 8-track and cassette tapes, the Highway Hi-Fi became a footnote in automotive history. Yet, for collectors and enthusiasts, these record players remain a symbol of a time when innovation in cars was as much about luxury and imagination as it was about transportation. Bench seats. Ah. Uh, bench seats, those relics of a bygone era in car design, where simplicity was just a fancy word for cheap and easy. From the early 1900s to the 2010s, these continuous, unsegmented dinosaurs ruled the automotive world. Why bother with individual seats when you could just throw a sofa in the front of your car? It was all about cramming as many people as you could into those metal beasts, especially in the big old station wagons and sedans. Comfort? Who needs that when you can have the warm, fuzzy feeling of squishing three adults side by side? But alas, times changed. The world got a bit smarter about things like comfort and, you know, not flinging your passengers through the windshield in a crash. So in came the bucket seats, the thrones of the modern car. They promised better ergonomics, support, and didn't they look fancy with those individual seat belts and airbags? Goodbye, communal bench seating, hello personal space and safety. The downfall of the bench seat was like watching a slow, painful evolution. People wanted their own little bubble. And safety regulations got a bit more, well, regulated. Cars stopped being just big boxes on wheels and started being these personalized comfort pods. Sure, a few trucks and larger vehicles held onto the bench seats like a stubborn grandpa refusing to get a smartphone. But for the most part, they went the way of the dodo. Wind up. Windows, those cranky old things that gave your arms a workout every time you wanted some fresh air. Back in the day, from the early 1900s to the 2000s, these manual contraptions were everywhere. Why use technology when a good old-fashioned hand crank will do? They were the go-to for budget cars and those who wanted to stick it to the man by avoiding anything electric. But as with all good or mediocre things, progress had to come and ruin the party. Enter electric windows, the smooth operators of the car world. Push a button and voila, the window magically moves. It was all part of the car industry's master plan to make everything easier, flashier, and let's face it, more expensive. Why strain your wrist when you can just press a button and watch the world outside your window blur into modern convenience? This shift was like watching a tech revolution on fast forward. Cars weren't just cars anymore. They were mini spaceships, ready to fly you to the future where everything was automated. By the early 2000s, 
manual wind-up windows were as rare as a payphone in Times Square. Sure, they're now a charming reminder of a simpler time, but nostalgia doesn't sell cars, does it? Those wind-up windows symbolize a time when we weren't all obsessed with the latest gizmos and gadgets, a time when driving was a bit more raw, a bit more real, and a bit less about showing off your car's latest tricks. They remind us of days when we were okay with a little effort, inconvenience, and much less automation. Full-sized spare tires. Remember when cars were like rolling fortresses, packing an extra wheel that wasn't some flimsy, glorified bicycle tire? Back in the 20th century, having a full-size spare was like a badge of honor, a silent nod to being prepared for the worst. These hefty fellows were the real deal, identical twins to your car's regular shoes, ready to step in without missing a beat. But then, the car world went on a diet, didn't it? Smaller cars, bigger wheels. Because apparently, size does matter when it comes to rims. Suddenly, there's no room for the beefy spare tire. The industry, always chasing a dollar, decided to shrink the spare. Now, we've got these space saver spares and repair kits. Sure, they save weight, give you a bit more trunk space, and maybe, just maybe, help with fuel efficiency. But let's face it, they're just cheap band-aids compared to the full-size glory we used to have. You can't even rotate these donut tires into your regular lineup. They're just temporary, flimsy fixes. A far cry from the sturdy, reliable solution we used to rely on. It's like trading your trusty old work boots for a pair of flip-flops. Pop-up headlights. These bad boys were the cat's pajamas from the 1930s all the way to the early 2000s. They were the secret agents of the car world. They're one minute, gone the next. Sleek, smooth, and downright cool. They gave sports cars that secret superhero vibe. When those lights popped up, it wasn't just about seeing the road. It was a signal that you were driving something special, a piece of art on wheels. But guess what? Progress happened. Or should we say progress? Because really, what's progress about ditching something as cool as pop-up headlights for some LEDs? Sure, LED and hid lamps are brighter, more reliable, and fit into tiny spaces. But where's the flare, the soul? The thrill of watching those eyes pop open as the sun goes down, gone, all in the name of efficiency and aerodynamics. It's like swapping your favorite vinyl records for digital files. Sure, it's more convenient, but the magic lost. Ashtrays and lighters. In the 20th century, these were as essential in a car as the steering wheel. They were a nod to the times when smoking was as common as breathing. But then, health kicked in the door. Smoking became the new social pariah, and slowly, ashtrays and lighters in cars started to vanish. It's a sign of the times, really. Cars stopped being just vehicles and started reflecting our changing world. The disappearance of ashtrays and lighters isn't just about adapting to new health standards. It's a mini revolution, a sign of cars evolving with our culture. But let's be honest, it also feels like losing a bit of that rebellious, devil may care attitude that came with flicking a cigarette into an inbuilt ashtray while cruising down the highway. Hood ornaments. Back in the day, Hood ornaments were the bling of the automotive world, the cherry on top of the car's metal cake. From the early 1900s to the 1990s, these shiny, often ridiculously over-the-top figures perched on the front of cars like little metal guardians of the road. They weren't just decorations, they were status symbols, screaming, look at me, I'm fancy. In a world where cars were more than just machines, they were legacies. But as with all good things, the era of hood ornaments came crashing down. Safety concerns? Sure, impaling a pedestrian isn't ideal. And let's not forget the cost-cutting frenzy of the industry. Why have a handcrafted piece of art when you can slap on a logo and call it a day? So, just like that, hood ornaments got the boot tossed into the forgotten corners of automotive history. Now, they're just nostalgic relics of a time when cars had a bit more personality and a lot less concern for practicality. Hope you had a blast exploring old school car features with us. If you liked it, hit like and subscribe for more cool trips down memory lane. What's your favorite old car feature that is missing these days? Let us know in the comments below.